Hakani, Satan Shah Muhammad Nazamadul Hakani. Mawlana Shaykh Shah Mukabani, Shaykh Adnan Kabani, Shaykh Muhammad Radil, Muhammad Khalik al Hujdawani. Sahib Zaman Sayyidina Muhammad al Mahdi alayhi salam, Ruhullah Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam, Sayyidullah Sayyidina alayhi salam, Thumma Sayyidina Baka Siddiq, Sayyidina Umar, Sayyidina Uthman, Imam al Hassan alayhi salam, Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, Sayyidat al Fatima alayhi salam. Wa sayyiru sadatina wa siddiqina al Fatiha. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Fawati Allah, Ya Rasulul Ramri Minkum. And always a reminder for myself and Abdul Aji Sadaifa, Miskeen, Azhar, and Jah. But for the grace of Allah that we're still in existence, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Ati Allah, Ati Rasul wa ulul amri minkum. Alhamdulillah the immense blessings of the month of Rabbil Awal and the celebrations of Mirada Nabi and that the path is based on building the heart and lowering the control of the mind in a world that operates the opposite. In this world everything is about the mind and no need to activate the heart. And in the heavens everything is about the heart and the control of the mind. And the issue comes in our lives that in this ocean of Allah's infinite rahmah and mercy Awliya are like a mountain, Fajibalan awtadan, that there's a category where Allah gives that the mountains are like awtad, the pegs, they keep stable. But in this analogy Allah's oceans of rahmah in which there's no beginning, no end, the islands of guidance like oasis of a guidance. So it's easy to visualize this ocean and the shaykhs are like an island. Each of the students in their lives they have their own boat that they're trying to keep close to that island, docked upon that island like a chain. So in our lives we have our, our life is like a boat, we're in a sailboat with our family, ourselves and our condition. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh, this is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. and our life is about anchoring near these awliya. And how to keep our life anchored because an anchor on a boat keeps it from drifting away because in this life of ours where everything is blowing us in every direction possible, Allah in the gift of guidance gives us anchors. These anchors keep us, istiqamu fi tariqatat, mean keep firm into your tariqah and the hikmah and wisdom of Allah putting us in certain conditions. And a reminder for myself those conditions are immense anchors in our life and we have to be conscious of things that anchor us to the tariqah and anchor us into a path in which is conducive to live the life of tariqah. And shaitan's role 
is to play with the heads of people because the heart when it contemplates it finds a peacefulness in what Allah has destined. Later you can meditate on the hikmah of why certain things in our life but that's through the vehicle of the heart. One of the dangers that shaitan plays with the heads of people is to destroy these anchors and that requires for us to contemplate in our life because so many emails come in that, uh, I want this, uh, if only for this, I'm upset with my children, upset with this job, upset with this, upset with the… all these things that people are upset with, discontent with and always in our life it's like a massive chess game because it requires contemplation. That when we contemplate the condition for example when people say the kids bother them, the kids not listening to them, whatever it is the condition that people put themselves in, the people of tafakkur that's why it's so essential in our lives. Those who don't contemplate they're continuously trying to destroy anchors in their life. On what's one example that the condition of the children in the home for example or spouse or whatever Allah puts a condition upon a person, those are anchors in life. The way they are, the situation they are, it grounds people. Some people wish they didn't have so many kids but that may be the very anchor because you know this world is tumultuous lots of storms. And this is just for us to take an example of a a specific understanding that a condition that we think is a problem or an issue, it may be very essential for our path. Or people are emailing all the time that they want a different job and if a different job comes could that be the destruction of an anchor? in which holds us on our path right next to that mountain or to that island. Because another job could come, a condition could come where all of a sudden you feel your life you lifted up an anchor or broke it and now your boat is drifting off somewhere else. Because of the conditions now you put yourself into for a new job, new place, new identity. And those are the dangers, not everything that opens for people is an opening. And everything that people are trying to struggle towards and struggle for, they have to be, if they're interested in their path and they're interested in their spirituality, they have to continuously contemplate that this issue I'm about to change in my life, if I change this work, does it change? conditions upon me and do you think that it's drawing your anchor deeper to your path or you may actually be be breaking an anchor and now your boat is almost more in danger of drifting away. Then you complain about another issue in your heart and then shaitan is trying to make you go after all your anchors. And before you know it your boat is drifting from the island. You see the shaykh less, you talk to the shaykh less, you communicate with the shaykh less. Why? Because now you you lifted the anchors that kept your boat near the island, so near that you could jump on board the island, walk around. I mean the proximity in which people put themselves to the tariqah is important. But the inner complaints that shaitan pushes into their hearts and the waswases that shaitan puts into their hearts, before you know it you see that their boats are drifting from the presence of the shaykh and they're not anchored near the island. They're farther away and they say, it's okay, it's okay, 
well, we can go less, we can talk less, we can communicate less with the shaykh. But you're not affecting the island if you have an issue or concern or you don't like the shaykh or something's changing in your heart about the shaykh or the tariqah or whatever it is the shaitan plays with people. Always remember the island's still there, all you've done was cut your boat from it and now your little raft and lifeboat in this immensely dangerous life we live filled with whomever you're responsible for is adrift at sea and just flopping around now to the waves. You have the feeling that you can see the shaykh or you can see the island, it's okay it's at a distance but there's a danger for that. And that's one of the realities of tafakkur when we stop meditating and we start listening to shaitan's waswas, it's like this, it's like this. You don't have to ever think about the island, why is it like this, why is it like that, it's not your business. The island is the island. Your business was to keep yourself in that little boat locked on, keep your anchor down. When you're too concerned about the island and not concerned about your boat, shaitan has played with you. That's when we gave the earlier examples where Allah gives from such a high example. You know to come just to critique Sayyidina Khidr it didn't work. You go your way, we go our way. It didn't take down Sayyidina Khidr it just separated people where you go your way and we'll continue doing our way. But for people whom are not Nabi Musa which 100% of the people, they don't have that glory in that station. They have their life in a little boat in a big storm and these are the wiles and the the games of shaitan that continuously whispers to people, get different work, get like this and people actually subconsciously are, are angry with their kids. Why are they angry? I'm thinking maybe if they had less or didn't have them they could do other things. Those doing of other things wouldn't have brought you to the tariqah. Everything in our, in our life is an anchor that brought us here. And awliya in their lives they pray that Allah anchor them more. They are be sent for me more conditions in which to hold me tight and let their roots to go deep into realities so that they can be like a mountain or like an evergreen tree in which their roots are the significance of their spiritual connection that they connect deep within the reality of their soul and they have a soul to soul connection with their guides and all the way up the chain of command. So we want to get to the condition in which we're deeply rooted in realities. Not a boat drifting away with it had one anchor now has no anchors and it's kind of just flopping around in these oceans of calamities. We have in the nasheed that we recite with all the Ahlul Bayt names that to keep us calm in this tufan and in these storms and calamities and that we die upon our path. This is a great achievement, not all who come perish on their path because of the difficulties of the games of shaitan. And the biggest difficulty are all of the anchors and then focusing on the mountain and not focusing on our little boat and our little ship to make sure that we're safe, we're locked on, we're anchored on to the tariqah and its ways. We pray that Allah give us an understanding of the power of the heart versus the head. This every year we talk at this time about the reality of the nam, the ant in which the little tiny ant 
Allah gives the example of the powers of Sayyidina Sulaiman means that anyone who wants to know the Muhammadan power then reads Surah Al-Naml the 27th Surah. That whatever power Sayyidina Sulaiman exhibits is not a drop in the power of Sayyidina Muhammad We said each Prophet represents a reality of Sayyidina Muhammad One such reality was the ability to even communicate with ants in which one the reality of the ant, Allah gives the example that the ant called out to all its community that all ants enter into your homes. The armies of Sayyidina Sulaiman are marching, lest we be destroyed by the approaching armies. And how Allah in this month of Mawlid Nabi the month of the realities of the kingdom, all these blessings and then only Allah come and Allah is pointing to them, you know all these blessings are, are based on a big heart and no head. That in the, in the majesty of all of this, this little ant has a big isharat or, or big guidance for us that if you want entry into this kingdom it's not the size of your head. Actually you have to reduce the size of your head and increase the size of your heart. It's not what you think but it's the ability to open one's heart, communicate with the heart, see with the heart, connect with the heart because the head is deceiving. The head and what the eyes comprehend based on its own understanding. If you have blue glasses you see the world is blue, you would look at the shaykh and say, he's blue. No, it's because you see the world through that shade. So you don't ever pay attention to your eyes because they're attached to your head. You don't pay attention to your ears because that's attached to your head. But the tafakkur and contemplation is attached to the heart and that the heart of insan is the house of Allah not the brain. Allah has nothing to do with the brain and as a fact the, our zikr is, La ilaha illallah, la to the head, ilaha to the right, illallah. Nothing but Allah into the heart. So then Allah gives an example of a creature that when you look at it has no head. Both sides look the same from the front and the back, you don't know if it's moving forward or it's moving backward. And that this is a creature based on its heart. And as a result of their heart they all communicate without cellular phones. So they actually say if you go to, to destroy an ant it's communicating with all the other ants. That's why these are, are creatures in which Allah gave uh, immense importance. They say as a matter of fact once you kill one ant it sends a signal to all the ants to come to retrieve it and you'll actually have more ants in your home. And this is the Qur'an teaching of the ants calling each other that go into your home because armies are coming to crush you. Means these creatures communicate. And how is it that they communicate with no modern technology? And we said before we can't have manners better than a dog, we always have to bite people, get angry. Then. The next month Allah is saying, okay forget the, you've got to have at least be better than a dog, at least have more spiritual power than an ant. <laughs> the ant can talk, he can communicate through his heart, all other ants can hear him. So when we want to think of ourselves, are we able to communicate with our heart? 
Do we spiritually connect and feel the connection, communicate through that connection? And when other people think, you guys are talking hocus pocus rubbish with all those are just giving the ant power to do that and describing that a whole bunch of ants are sitting and communicating, go into your home, armies are coming. They even know what is coming. How do they even see what's coming when they don't even see the size and magnitude based on the, the small, how small they are? What ability Allah gave them for something so small to comprehend something so immense? Do they have a vision? Do they have a, an energy ability to understand? How do they understand? Because Allah gave very specific that the armies of Sayyidina Sulaiman are approaching. How do they know where they're approaching from? All of these have to do with spiritual power. That how this little tiny creature has spiritual power. Then Allah is asking from us, can you not have more spiritual power than an ant? As us to have a dalil in our lives <coughs> that, Wa lakal karamna bani adam, you are my honoured creation, you are my most beloved creation, I gave you many more powers. But just to prove to you these creatures all have power. We seem to be the only creature that doesn't want to use our power because we played with the false power, the imitated power of technologies and this is the deceit of the jinn kingdoms, the, the, the bad jinn kingdoms that they want to entrap humans and take the mind and energy of humans for their own manipulation. But these are our God-given rights Allah described, you can have the power of an ant in which you communicate and see a distance, communicate with others through your heart. All of these abilities should be within insan if they can open their heart and control their mind. Now the mind is something very dangerous. Now the mind is continuously being bombarded with thoughts and fears. Means this anxiety and fear that enters the mind is shaitan's attack upon the head. And the defense for the believer is, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi alim nadeem. Why there is no help and there is no power except in Allah. Then what is there to fear? When you fear something, your zikr is, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi alim nadeem. Instead of listening to the fear that shaitan is instilling, acknowledge there's no help and power except in Allah and that His power to reach to you and take away fear, take away anxiety, take away the control that shaitan is putting upon the head and then the dhikr of La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah bringing the servant back into oneness. That there is no power, there is nothing and that illallah and that energy comes begin to burn the head from where shaitan is playing and put the light back into illallah except in Allah And then definitely durood sharif so that to have the presence and power from Sayyidina Muhammad That as we enter into these difficult phases of dunya, this is the, the end of days which have momentous events, calamitous events, the bombardment of shaitans attacking upon humanity is not something small but something immense and all of that requires the spiritual training and development that lowers the head and increases the heart. And think into my life, if I don't want to communicate with the shaykh, the choices I make in life, are they anchoring me to the island, closer to his island, closer to that reality or am I finding myself drifting away? 
I get this new job, boom, I cut the anchor, nowhere to be found. I get this new thing I wanted, you cut another anchor. Get another condition that you've been uh, complaining about and you want to resolve that condition, all of a sudden you feel that that anchor is completely lifted and you've now drifted away from the tariqah, from its training, from even attending, listening, watching, any of the practices. And as a result we become a little boat in an immense storm. We pray that Allah give us an understanding that this kingdom it's based on the heart and this heart is based on conditioning and connecting with those whom their hearts are open. And under the discipline of holding firm and tight to the rope in which Allah describes for us, hold tight to that rope. Whether we think as a rope, we think it, we're anchored to His island in this oceans of, of immense immensity, we have to be anchored to something and that our life is not to break that anchor, to cut that rope and to find ourselves adrift. Subhanahu rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Wa alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.